Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Olivia Malloy. I am the uh, admissions assistant at Duquesne University with the Center for Global Engagement. Um, I just want to welcome everyone and say thank you for joining. Uh, this morning, we have Chris Health, who is the Director of Enrollment Management with the School of Health Sciences. So today he will be talking about a couple of the uh, majors within the School of Health Sciences. Um, we're lo really looking forward to that. I just want to uh, give a reminder that this session is being recorded. Um, so if you could please keep your camera and your microphones muted until the Q&A session, um, that would be appreciated. Uh, during the Q&A session, uh, you can either unmute your microphone or type your question into the chat box and we will answer that for you. Um, so again, thank you for joining and now I'm going to hand it over to Chris Hill. Thank you. Thanks, Olivia. Thank you all for joining me today. I am, as Olivia mentioned, the Director of Enrollment Management for the School of Sciences. I serve as the main admissions liaison that works within the school. So if you do at any point in time have any questions about admission processes or any of the programs that we have in the School of Health Sciences, I'll give you my contact information at the end and would welcome hearing from you at any point in time. So what I'm going to do is uh, run through a brief overview of the School of Health Sciences and then there are three majors specifically that I want to talk about a little bit more in particular and then give an opportunity for to ask your questions. To start with, just to give you an idea of the size of Duquesne and the School of Health Sciences. Duquesne has around 10,000 students. The School of Health Sciences is one of the schools that we have. The school was founded in 1991, so we have been around long enough to really perfect the things that we do and really become a major player in the marketplace of health sciences. We have just over 1,100 total students in the School of Health Sciences between the different majors that we have. We have over 50 full-time professors. We also use adjunct faculty as well, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. And we have an 18 to one student-teacher ratio. Some of our classes will be much smaller than that. Some of them might be a little bit bigger. If you have specific questions later on about how many students are in each one of the majors and programs, I'm happy to address those. We do have 10 different majors in the School of Health Sciences. Some of them are strictly undergraduate programs. Some of them are undergraduate and graduate programs, and some of them are solely graduate programs. Overall, our students have been highly successful. We have nearly 100% board licensure and certification pass rates and job placement after graduation. So our, our students are very well prepared afterwards when they reach the marketplace. This is a list of all of the programs that we have here. Um, and I'm not gonna read them all off to you, but you can see some of the programs we have, like I mentioned, are just undergraduate, some are graduate, and the ones that you can see that are listed in both places are, are both degrees and have both options. Some of them combined, some of them are separate programs. And we do have new programs that we add from time to time. The next programs that we're working on are a Master of Public Health, which will be online, moving our Master of Speech and Pathology online, and a Doctorate in Health Sciences. Why choose the School of Health Sciences at Duquesne University? What is it about us that makes us different than other programs? And here's a list of the, of the top things that make us different, but our curriculum, like I mentioned, we've had a lot of time to fine tune all of our curriculum to make sure that the classes that students are taking are going to give you every different competency, to make sure that you know what you're doing and make sure you're an expert at the things that you need to do to be able to perform those duties after you graduate. Our students are taught by nationally known, and some of them internationally known, faculty. We are incredibly lucky to have some people that are known around the country who are here teaching classes because they have a dedication to working with students. Most of them are doing research and publishing in scholarly journals, doing presentations across the country and across the world, but they're also very focused on making sure that they're working individually with students. They're very devoted to the actual practice of teaching students. We also use, as I mentioned, some adjunct faculty. It's important for us to have people who are working in these current fields, who know what's happening in the field, who can come and share some of their expertise with our students. All of our important core classwork are taught by full-time professors. 
when we do bring in adjuncts, when there are things that we need to add to what's happening so that students are aware of what's going on in their fields. So all of our programs will also an opportunity to do hands-on work. And some of our programs are physical therapy, physician assisted studies, occupational therapy, that's required. You have people with patients. So we also have opportunities in some of the programs we talk about, health administration and public health for you to do an internship. Our faculty, as I mentioned, will work with you one on one. Every one of our programs offers faculty mentorship. So you have someone who is an expert in their field who's working on you to help you reach the goal that you want to reach after graduation. Most of our programs will allow you to pursue a minor or a certificate. And pretty much all of them will allow study abroad opportunities, which could be as much as a full semester or as short as a one week program. The three programs that I would like to focus on a little bit more today are health administration, public health, and health sciences. We found that a lot of programs are, are pretty commonly known. Most students are familiar with what a physical therapist or an occupational therapist is and what they do. But we found that sometimes Students don't have the same level of exposure that feels like health administration and public health. So I want to focus in a little bit more on those. So what is health administration? Who are health administrators? What do they do? Health administration is about making sure that the health care that's provided to patients is of the highest quality and the highest efficiency. The people that work in health administration are typically called medical service managers, health service managers, health administrators, uh, but they work mostly with how the business of healthcare works. Examples of things that they do would be increasing the effectiveness of the care that's given by doctors, nurses, physician assistants, those types of people, to make certain that the information that's going from the patient that has to go for billing, those sorts of things, all of the stuff that happens kind of behind the scenes is as streamlined as possible to make sure that healthcare facilities are providing the highest quality healthcare, that they are maintaining all of their accreditations to make sure that access for people who might have disabilities are provided for. They will work with the people who actually work in the facilities to make sure that they have training, to make sure that they're recruiting the highest quality people to work on staffs that are, and they're also keeping keeping in touch with what the newest laws and regulations are to make sure that everyone is up to What makes this program so different than a lot of our other programs, someone graduates from physical therapy, they're going to work as a physical therapist. They might work in a hospital, they might work in a clinic, but they're going to do mostly the same jobs. The program is very different because the jobs that students go through after they graduate are going to be widely varied, and they're not going to read off everything that's on the field on the screen, but you'll see that they're working in a wide variety. If we graduate 20 students in a typical year, we might see them go into 20 completely separate different options and opportunities after they graduate. So um, they do work across the whole spectrum of the healthcare industry. To switch topics a little bit to public health. Public health is also working in making sure that people have access to health care, but they're a little bit more focused on individual people themselves than the health care systems that surround them. So they protect and improve the health of people and a lot of times in the communities themselves. So they might be working with education and educating people about healthy lifestyle. Tobacco cessation, for example, or healthy options for eating, maybe for children or people who want to lose weight and get healthier. And sometimes it's about the convention of disease. That could be making certain that air quality is clean or water quality is clean for populations. They can work really all across the world. And our anticipation is that our graduates will be working all across the world. This is a little bit more information about what public health is. The main part is that they're working in providing quality to communities and making certain that they have access to health and health. Similar to health administration, there are a lot of 
different opportunities for people to work in the community of public health. Some of them will go into education, some of them are working for organizations, some of them are working on their own. Some of them are working, in some cases, in, in an organization, not necessarily behind the desk all day, but they're working for um, offices in, in kind of an office setting. And then we have some people that are up to their knees in water out in the field all day, every day. So there's a wide variety of different places that people who work in public health can work afterwards. One interesting thing about our public health program is that we have the only undergraduate public health program in the city of Pittsburgh. And so there are wonderful opportunities uh, here locally. A lot of students who want to work in public health have to get master's degrees. So it's going to be a, a little bit longer for those students to be working in the field. We have students getting bachelor's degrees who are working in the field immediately after graduation. And they're doing uh, they're doing internships and internship field work experience is going to be an important part of public health education as well. But what a student wants to do, it's going to happen a little bit later because students have to find out all of the different options and take classes and do a little bit of experience in the different fields before they find out where they actually want to go to do that outside field work experience. The last program I want to talk about is health sciences, the Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences. This is a little bit different than health administration and public health. The majority of majors that we offer in the School of Health Sciences are for students who know exactly what they want to do with the rest of their lives. We put students on very distinct pathways from the very beginning. A student knows that they want to work in health administration. They're going to be taking health administration classes very early in the program and learning about that pretty quickly. The same with athletic training physician assistants, that is speech language pathology, are other programs for students that know exactly what they want to do. But we know and understand that that's not every student. There are a lot of students who don't know what they want to do afterwards, but they know that they want to work in the healthcare field. And so undecided students have options at the university to look into um, liberal arts or the general sciences, but if a student knows that they want to work somewhere in the health field, then they can go into the health science. And what they get is a basic background in how the health systems work, how healthcare works, sciences, some social sciences as well, so that students can figure out as they go along what they want to do. In fact, in the very first semester of the health sciences program, students will meet, they have a one credit class and they meet for one hour every week. And every week they're talking about a different field. So in one week, they might be talking about physician assistants. So we have a physician assistant, several physician assistants who come in and talk about what their field requires, what the day-to-day -day work is like. And then the next week it might be nurses. And the week after that, it might be doctors who went to an absolute Catholic school. So that students can find out about what the field of healthcare is like and get an idea for what they wanna do later on. We offer different tracks depending on what a student wants to do afterwards. If a student knows from the very beginning that they want to go on to medical school, vet school, dental school, for example, they have to follow a very specific pathway early on to make certain that they can get the, the courses required to apply to medical schools and be prepared to take the entrance examinations. And we have a pathway for students to do that. We also have another pre health track for students who want to go into physician assistant studies, physical therapy, occupational therapy, some of those similar related fields where they can all take most of the same classes, but there are elective built in that they can use to focus on which sort of graduate program they want to pursue later on. And then we have an integrated health track that's for students who don't necessarily want to go on to the graduate school afterwards. And so some of the places that they can work afterwards, similar to what we talked about with health administration and public health, is that they have a wide variety of places that they can work afterwards. So they could be working in a hospital, they could be working for a company, typically larger companies who want to provide health and wellness information to their employees because healthy employees are more productive employees and people who work in a company typically want to find ways to be healthy. So they have the background and the training that they need to be able to pursue those pathways. So there are a lot of different ways that students can go from the health sciences. And they have an option of changing their mind that the students start from the beginning thinking that they want to go to pre-med and then realize at some point in time that they don't 
want to go to medical school, they want to try a different field, or they don't want to go to school right away. All of these jobs, all of these careers are still offered as an opportunity for them. For these programs, to talk about admissions requirements, basically what we're looking for is a high school GPA of about a 3.0. We'd like to see that you've taken science classes. We'd like to see that you've done some things to challenge yourself, maybe some more difficult science classes if those are available. And we want to see that you've done some extracurricular activities outside of the classroom as well. We're not looking for students who are going to come in here, go to class, and lock themselves in a room and study for the rest of the day. We want people who are going to be active, involved members of the community, join organizations, and find out a lot more about what Duquesne is like, what the city of Pittsburgh is like. Right now, for this current cycle, we're for these three programs offering test optional admissions. So we, we are not requiring SAT or ACT scores in this, this current cycle. Deadline wise, they are currently asking students if they want to have priority access. That means if you want to hear sooner about whether a student is admitted or whether you're receiving a scholarship, they want to get those in by November. But students can apply all the way up until next August. Sometimes your, your first choice doesn't work out. Sometimes you've made a commitment someplace else and you realize a little bit later on that you haven't made the right choice and you want to come back to your game. We have a lot of time to do that. We do ask that students who, um, submit deposits by May 1st, but I can tell you that these programs are typically not dealing with space constraints. So if a student decides over the summer that they change their mind or come back to these programs, we typically have the flexibility to offer that. Students who do commit to Duquesne will typically get their fall schedule in June, and then we do a summer program in July that we're hoping to be a privilege here on campus for the pandemic, no one knows. But our hope is to have students here on campus where you can have an opportunity to meet the dean, some of the faculty members, and some of the staff members that work with you throughout the program. As I mentioned, I want to give my contact information here at the end. The phone number there is my direct line. It will ring. Um, directly into my office, or if I'm not in my office, it will to myself. And then the email address, rshs at uq.edu, uh, come to me directly. You can email me at hilfc at uq.edu, but this one's a little bit easier to remember, um, and that does connect me. So I thank you for the time spent listening to me talking about these programs, and I do hope to hear from all of you. I uh, hope that there are some questions that I can talk about here. If there aren't any questions, then feel free to reach out to me at any point in time. But I'll stop there and find out if there are any questions. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, so if anyone has a question, you can go ahead and unmute your microphone now uh, to ask your question, or you could type it in directly to the chat box. Um, you can go ahead and do that now. I also just um, entered Chris's uh, Duquesne email address. If you'd like to contact him directly, it's hillc at duq.edu. Okay. Uh, so I don't think there are any questions right now, um, but again, feel free to contact Chris directly if you have questions about any of the uh, health science programs. Um, if you have any questions about submitting the application um, or just general Duquesne questions, you can always contact the Center for Global Engagement. Um, so our email address is inteladmissions at duq.edu. Um, and we're always happy to help you. Um, so thank you so much, Chris, for uh, joining us today. Thank you everyone for watching um, and we hope to see you at Duquesne.